hey guys welcome to new video and in this video we are going to create a new project using which you would be able to control your media player by using your hand if you raise one finger meaning do some operation in the media player 5 4 3 2 and so on so you should get a basic idea in this video we are going to detect how many fingers have been raised by the user and accordingly we are going to perform the operations on media player so let's do this to make this video simple i'm going to divide this video into three chapters first we are going to write a basic code for reading the frames from the camera by using OpenCV. then in the second chapter we are going to detect for hand landmarks by using a media pipe and finally the most important chapter 3 we are going to create a logic for detecting the number of fingers has been raised and just implement the which key to press or controlling the media player in short so let's get inside it so I'm going to open a terminal and go to the desktop and I'm going to open my main.py. You can just do it manually by using mouse. So here is it and you can see that it is blank. Let's start our chapter 1 reading frames from the webcam directly so it should not take too long. First I'm going to write the code so that it don't take too long and then I can explain it to you. So I'm going to write it out first. So here is the code, uh, let me just explain it to you. First we have imported CV2 li uh, library and then we have created a cap object of video capture to read the frames from our webcam, zero, zeroth webcam, uh, I guess it is default one. Then we are uh, running into the infinitely true loop and if the user presses the escape key and this CV2.wait key for one millisecond is used to wait for user input. If user presses escape key, 27 is the code for escape. Then we want to break out of this true loop and we want to destroy all the windows. And all with all the windows, I mean the window which is showing the frame to the user on the screen. So then we are going to release the camera resource so that other applications can use it. Then we have breaked out of this true loop. Uh, using this line, we are reading frames from this cap object and the frame is stored in frm variable and then this save to dot im show meaning image show i guess is used to show the frame to the user let's run this code and to run it if you're using pycharm there should be a directly run button but oh yeah i'm going to go for more manual approach and you just have to say python main.py since i am on the desktop directory so main.py is also on the desktop directory so it should run there it is and here it is me now one thing I want to change is flipping the frame since it is a mirror and I don't like it. So you just have to pass frm and pass 1 as the flip code for horizontal flip. And let's run this one more time. There you go. That's all. Now we are going to use media pipe library to detect the landmarks of the hand. So, so easy. You just have to import the media pipe real quick as mp and let's define some variables. First we are going to define for drawing for drawing the key points of the hand on the frame so you just have to say mp.solutions.drawingutils and we need hands uh, reference you just have to say mp.solutions.hands that's all now we are going to create hand object from this hands.hands now in this hands you can pass how many hands you want to detect in a one frame we only want to do detect one hand so max hand actually it's max num hands equal to one we only want to detect one hand in the frame no matter how many hands are in there that's all now we are going to use this frm to detect to send it to this hand object to detect for hands and we are going to store the result in res variable we are going to access this hand object and there is a sub function you can call process and in this you just have to pass this frm but in rgb format and opencv reads the frame in bgr format now we have to convert this bgr to rgb that's so easy you just have to say save to dot cvt color and pass this frm and the code will be color underscore bgr to gray sorry bgr to rgb looks good and now this result will contain the result now it will not always be the case that there are hands in the frame so sometimes this res could be null also now first we have to check if res dot 
multi hand landmarks this is going to return the list of hands detected hands in the frame so if it is not empty if length is greater than zero then we are going to get inside this if condition then we are going to use this drawing variable to draw the landmarks dot draw landmarks we want to draw on frm the landmarks are going to be this res dot multi hand landmarks since i said it is going to return the list either you can run a for loop and draw all the all the hands in the frame but since we are only going to detect one hand so we can say zeroth element in the list and there will always be the zero element in the list now if you run it like this let me just show you this is only going to draw the key points on the hand but it looks good if the key points are connected so for that connection we have created this hands and you can just call hand actually it is hand connections so let's run this one more time now you can see that it is more better let's proceed to chapter 3 and now we are going to write our logic for detecting how many fingers has been raised in the frame well actually let me just show it to you it should not be very difficult to understand the logic first we are going to understand then uh, it will be much easier for you to write that logic on your own so here you can see that what makes it look like that this finger has been raised you can calculate the distance between this key point and this key point and if it is greater than some value then we can say that this finger is raised and if it is smaller than some value we can say that this finger is not raised but now the problem is what value with what value we are going to compare it now one thing you can say that okay we can compare it with zero or maybe five or six but the problem is our hand is in the 3d space the user can move their hand anywhere they want to we want our algorithm to be rigid which could work for almost all of the cases so what we could do we can calculate distance between this and this key point y value i'm talking of this is the y axis and this is the x axis so we are going to calculate the y value between these two key points we can cut it into half so we are only going to take this distance and if this distance we consider it as stretch value then it is for sure that this particular distance between this key point and this key point this y distance will always be going to be greater than half of this distance between this key point and this key point so i will explain it to you with the help of image then it will be more clear okay so here you can see that this is our y axis and this is our x axis now i have been saying that we can calculate this whole distance between 9 to 0 key point and we can separate it into half then we can take this particular distance as stretch distance and then we can calculate the y value between 5 and 8 9 and 12 13 and 16 17 and 20 then we can compare it with the thresh value and if it is greater than then we can say that the finger is traced otherwise not so we can do all of this by defining a function let's define a count fingers function and it's going to take the list of all of these key points of the hands and we are going to call this function over here if there are some hands in the frame now i'm going to copy it and i can say hand key points is equal to this the zeroth hand and instead of passing this whole thing now i can pass this hand key point like that and i can call a function count fingers on this hand key points that's all i hope it makes sense now now we'll come back to over here we will define a variable called cnt which is going to track the count of how many fingers has been raised and we are going to return this cnt afterwards and this we have to do the rest of the functionality so let's first define the thresh value and from this LST, if you want to detect the all of the landmarks separately, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, up to 20, then you just have to say LST.landmark. And now you can access by using the indexing. So we want to access 0 and 9. We can say 0.y value dot x value. But for now, we want to get the y value. We are going to subtract it from the ninth one like that and we are going to divide everything by 2 now the only problem is that 
these x y values are normalized between 0 to 1 let's scale these value by some value uh, we can just multiply them by 100 to scale them up instead of 0 to 1 it will be 0 to 100 that's all looks good the thresh value is now defined now we just have to calculate the y value between 5 and 8 then we can say if it is greater than some value then we can say the finger is raised otherwise it is not so just have to do this i'm going to copy this and we'll just change 5 and 8 now if it is greater than thresh then we can increment the cmt and over here we can print the output of this function let's do the same for rest of the four fingers for thumb i'm going to explain it later to you what will be the problem but for now let's say 9 12 and 13 16 so i'm just going to change them over here 9 12 13 16 and then 17 20. get back to our terminal try to run it and see if it works or not keep an eye on the terminal and it is going to return how many fingers has been raised currently zero 1, 2, 3, 4 and now no matter how far your hand or how close your hand is to the camera it is going to always return the right results now for the thumb we are going to follow a bit different approach now instead of calculating between 2 and 4 the thumb is more considered as raised in the x-axis so we are going to change it accordingly so instead we are going to detect between 5 and 4 so I'm going to copy it one more time and I'm going to subtract 5 from 4 and instead of y this time it will be x now it looks like this 4 and 5 will be smaller than the half of distance between 0 to 9 so we could uh, basically take more manual approach this time let's try defining 5 over here and if the difference is greater than 5 then we can say the thumb is raised otherwise not let's try it out you can see that it is working yeah it is running perfectly fine now we are able to detect the how many fingers has been raised now we just have to use pi auto gui to send the key inputs to our media player now for example i'm going to open youtube to show it to you okay so here you can see that is the youtube and if i press the right arrow key on my keyboard then you can see that it is forwarding the song and if i press backward key uh, the left key of, on my keyboard it is backwarding the song and if i press up key down key volume up and down if i press space key it is pause or unpause the song so we are going to just use pi auto gui to automatically press these keys when the particular finger is raised so we can just import pi auto gui pi auto and come back over here the return result we can store in cnt and here we can say if cnt is equal to 1 then we can say that pi auto gui dot press now whatever you want to for example i am i am going to say if one finger is raised I want to forward the song and if cnt is equal to 2 i'm going to press the left key on my keyboard so to go backward in the song and similarly i'm going to okay so now you might consider that okay the project is now completed but not there is a problem in this in this whole thing now remember how it is if the one finger is raised it is continuously returning 1111 so many times so it means that if cnt is 11111 so many times it is going to press right 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 so many times i hope you are getting the idea what is going to happen if i try this over here on the youtube player now how to solve that it is so easy to solve that we can create a different variable prev and it is going to store the previous cnt variable so we can come in over here prev is equal to cnt and if now over here instead of directly checking we can check if prev is not equal to cnt then we are going to press these keys take your time try to understand what i have done now let's test it out still there is one bug which we are going to solve it now this should work let's try it out okay now i'm going to open my safari 
my youtube media player let me resize it a little bit so if you see over here if i raise five fingers then meaning unpause the song so let's try it out Okay, so if you have noticed one thing over here, which I was talking about earlier, raising five fingers is not instant thing. If I try to raise five fingers, I'm going to pause this and comment this out and run it one more time to explain it to you. So what I'm saying that if I try to raise five fingers, this is not instant. Maybe first four fingers are raised, then this is raised. If I try to raise three fingers, maybe I raise it like that. But my main intention is to raise three fingers. Raising the fingers take time. If I want to raise one finger, that's instant, obviously. But if I want to raise four fingers, it is going to take time. Maybe first one finger is detected, then this, this, this. So we need to give users some time frame. Okay, now it's your time to raise the finger. And we should give users some time for which we are not going to press key. We are going to wait for user to let it raise all the fingers, how many fingers he want to raise. So to do that, to solve that, you need to understand this logic. We are going to import time for that. And we are going to use some variables. Start init is equal to false. Uh, that's all over here. And we can come in back over here. If previous is not equal to CNT, instead of directly concluding to the result that cnt equal to 1 then press this if cnt equal to 2 press this we need to wait for some time if that time frame is passed then we want to perform this operation so we can come in back over here we can check if start init not meaning the start time has not yet been initialized we can say start time is equal to time dot time and we can say start init equal to true meaning we have initialized the start time now next time it's not going to get inside this similarly we are going to use end time let's say end time is equals to time dot time and let's get back in over here else if if the start time has been initialized then we can check if end time minus start time is greater than maybe 0 0.2 second we are going to give a 0.2 seconds to the user to let it raise all the fingers then we are going to say perform the operation now over here once it is get inside this condition or even not this is going to update the previous we are only going to update the previous when the operation or the key is pressed so we are going to take it over here now over here this start in it is true we need some line to make it false so this over here we are making it false meaning the operations have been performed we are going to reset everything we are going to reset this false operation so now i hope you are able to understand i tried my best to explain it to you try it pause the video maybe try watching it again if still not clear try asking in comment section why i did that now let's try it one more time now this should be perfect Okay, so it is running as expected. Now you could try it with VLC media player. It should work more fine. Um, that's all for this video. And if you still have any doubts, any queries about any line of code I have written over here, then you may ask in down comment section. I have tried my best to explain this project. And if still any queries, try asking them in down comment section. There will be still the links to personal chats. There will be Instagram page link or Facebook page link. You can ex talk to me from the overall so that's all for this video i'm going to catch you in the upcoming video till then goodbye